Q Music. We're all about class when it comes to pens, and we like to let it show. Welcome to Fountain Pen Radio, presented by FBGeeks.com. And now for your fountain pen enthusiast hosts, here's Eric and Dan. Gentlemen. This is Fountain Pen Geeks podcast, episode number 36 for Tuesday, August 7th, 2012. We are recording live on Saturday, August 4th. Welcome to Fountain Pen Radio. My name is Eric. Dan, how and are I'm you And I'm Dan. I'm fantastic with what our lovely about new this graphic. graphic. It's uh, awesome. Wow, that is, is really, really got, good stuff. Uh, uh, let me see. Uh, I wrote down, this was submitted as part of a uh, an entry for the Franklin Christoph giveaway pen. This was submitted by um, uh, uh, Peter and his little sister, Le- Leona, or Leonora. Peter is nine years old. And, and I think Peter had some help with this. I, I don't know, but... It, I think Peter had some help with it. At any rate, I think they did a really good job. I'm there. My lamp is in the back. My clock is on the wall. You're there. The blinds are in the back. Now, this was, of course, pre, pre-bulletin pre board days. And and Doc Brown is obviously, that's Doc Brown. He's got glasses and there's a, there's a finger in his nose. That's <laughs> got to be him. him. Has to be him. Speaking of Doc Brown, why don't we get him on the line here? There he is. We need a finger in your nose, Doc. <laughs> Sorry. How's everybody today? Good, fantastic. I'm, How are you well, guys? Well, I'm very, very well. Doc Brown, let's hear from you, please. Yeah, so am I. It's it's uh, once again we had a lot of rain today, but now the sun is shining. So it's it's every time I, I get online with you guys, the sun has to shine. I don't know why that is, but it's it's a strange correlation. We're, so we're you know, that. It's we great. pay big bucks for that to happen. Let me assure you. I see. That that makes a lot of sense. Yes. Um, shall we get right into it? I mean, I think everybody yeah, probably absolutely. knows that we're here today to give away the Franklin Christoph pen, but we're going to wait on that, right? Because first, we want to talk about pen shows. That's usually, yeah, right. yeah. of course. Well, next week is the twenty-first annual DC Super Show, August ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth. A um, lot of stuff going on. Uh, starts on Thursdays, but this is only open to exhibitors and weekend traders. Um, but starting on Thursday, there will be the, the ink testing tables. They'll be open 24-7 throughout the whole weekend. Over 250 bottles of ink will be available for your testing, your, your sampling, your, I mean, wh- whatever you want to do. They'll have cotton swabs there so you can, you know, you know make little, little samples, swabs in your books. Um, let's see, then Friday. Friday, it'll, it'll be more the same. At 6 p.m. on Friday, there's a wine and beer party for anyone looking to just get obliterated. Um, the, the one thing I was confused about is there's no pin auction right yeah, after that. That's usually I when mean, they make their most money, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, anyways, Saturday, um, let's see, general admission starts at 10 a.m. and it's only seven bucks to get in the door. Um, but from, from nine, nine o'clock to one o'clock, is a calligraphy workshop by Maria Wayro, and this will be open to the public of all levels. There will be a 30-minute lunch halfway through, which is a good thing because, I mean, this is a long session. I'd be starving by the end of that. It's, it's not too expensive, $40 per person, but you get a 50% discount if you're a member of the Washington Calligraphers Guild, the Baltimore Fountain Pen Society, the Fountain Pen Network, Collectors of America, or a member of a Civil War reenactment group or organization. And that's relevant because Maria is a sustaining member of the Washington Calligraphers Guild, and she's also a reenactor in the 3rd United States Infantry Company K, doing demonstrations of period writing during the American that's Civil amazing. War. <laughs> I thought that's cool. <laughs> So she will bring like a, a saber and a, a, an old long matchlock rifle. Oh, that, that would be. Uh, Sounds like we need to get some photos. Yeah. D- d- Absolutely. That's for sure. Um, so Saturday um, after that at two o'clock is the Pin Collectors of America Pins for Kids workshop. At four is the Baltimore Washington Richmond area Joint Pin Club meeting. On Sunday the doors open at ten seven dollar entry fee, but at eight thirty. Richard Bender is doing a a nib smoothing clinic, and um, the registration for that was already posted online. 
It was twenty dollars per person. It sold out in an hour. Uh, sold out in an hour because there were uh, twelve slots available, right? Yeah, there was only oh, 12, is that it? twelve people. It's a twelve person seminar class type thing. So I thought it was like fifty yeah, people, or fifty thousand. You know, you know with Binder, he he could have sold that out too. <laughs> but he he wants to you know, be if, rather personal with your nibs, so he limits it to twelve. All right, still heck of a good price for that. Um, and then the advertised show closing on Sunday is 5 p.m., but they've, they've said that people usually stick around until 7, and the doors are officially locked at 9. So, I mean, could be there all day. And if that's not enough, Private Reserve will be giving away 700 15-milliliter bottles of their Invincible Black ink. Stipula will be giving away 200 bottles of their ink on Saturday and Sunday. And, you know, this is just a small portion of what's going on. Definitely check out PennCentral.com for all the information. One of the things that isn't listed, I don't believe, at PennCentral.com that is very important to the DC Pen Show is that both Doc Brown and I will be there live and in person. Yes, they, that yeah, should that's true. center, I mean, glowing. <laughs> I mean, really? I mean, what better reason to go to the DC Pen Show than to, to be in our presence as we incite frenzy and indulge in the madness, of course. It's true. But yes. Speaking of going to the Pen Show, wasn't that our poll question? Isn't that our current poll question? It is. When will you be attending or will you be attending the DC Pen Show? Um, at the time, I uh, got all the votes at 234. Um, 40% said, no, I can't make it this year. Um, and there was only, let's see, seven percent said yes, and it was my first time, and then five percent said absolutely. So I, I fell into the yes, I, it's my first time at the DC Pen Show. Oh, I, I, yeah, so did I. I. I was maybe if the plane oh, is really? aligned. There's still a chance, Mr. Smith. <laughs> yeah, that bag <laughs> of money could... this afternoon. <laughs> uh, give me another sound test, Dan. You're you're gone. There you are. Testing, you are. one, Thank two, three. Coming back. Uh, I don't know what the... Yeah. So, but Dan, I mean, I, I, sorry, I was just... If, if Dan, if you start walking today, do you think you could make it? No. Uh, well, no, then, then I have no clothes. No, because he'd be something. stopping at every IHOP, every Starbucks. <laughs> I, I don't know. How long is the drive? You could drive in a day, couldn't you? A very long day? Be about an oh, yeah, 18-hour hour drive. Day. Easy. So... Better start on Tuesday. Tuesday. We'll, we'll see what happens. You know, one of the things we haven't been doing because Doc Brown hasn't been here is we haven't been talking much about encyclopedia uh, because we saved them for him. And so why don't we give him hey, center yeah. stage here and make him talk? All right. Oh, yes, because I was too <laughs> quiet. Uh, <laughs> Uh, no, the um, I think I, I've had a two further installments now. We've had Diamond Twilight. Uh, which was chosen during the, the last time I was a guest here uh, by the the people the the, the audience. Um, Diamond Twilight, I think, is a is is a very interesting ink because it's it's a sort of weird, I don't know, grayish blue. It's a strange color, but I I like it. It looks um, kind of like Twilight. And yes, it does look like Twilight. So it's, it's a very aptly named ink. I, I I kind of like that, and it's 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 nice because it's not. A very typical blue. Now, what is a very typical blue, I think, is base state blue, which is a very in-your-face blue. It's really blue. Um, so we also did a an installment on that. Now, base state blue, of course, is an ink that has uh, spawned some discussion, to really? say the least. Fill me in. Um, I don't know anything about that. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, you know so oh, no, no, it's it's. Uh, uh, now, of course, I mean, it's it's. Some people have have mentioned that it it stains pens and and does stuff and. Um, one person actually mentioned, he commented uh, on the, uh, uh, the, the encyclopedia entry, and he said, well, you know, it actually has a high pH value, and, it, and that's true. It's actually listed on the bottle. Uh, so, you, you know, I, I think if you want to use that ink, it's just fine, but I, I would be careful, uh, and I would, I would put it, you know, get it a cheap pen, and put it in there, and then you should be fine. But it, it does actually stay, and I've added some pictures. Uh, one of the pens I use for the encyclopedia is a, has a, a clear feed, and you can actually see that that when I pulled it out of the pen, just I, I, I flushed it, right? It was not wet. You can actually see it, it turn blue because I have a sort of before and after picture of the 
the blued um, uh, feed and the feed it, uh, the color it usually has. So it, it yeah, it, it it can stain stuff, and then generally speaking, you can sort of reverse that by, by taking some bleach and some water and, and putting your stuff in there. But of course, you don't want to put everything in, right? I mean, I wouldn't put a gold nib in, in bleach and that kind of stuff. Um, and uh, the, the person online actually also said, well, you know, be, be a little careful with, with some vintage pans and materials. So nevertheless, I think it's still an, an interesting ink, but you, I, would, I, I personally don't put that in, in expensive pens. That's just, it's a, that's well, I, I've never actually but, used you know, it myself, but I understand that although it has these quirks about it, it's very popular because it's a beautiful blue. Yeah, so I think so. It's, it's very intense. It's a very intense blue and very vibrant, I think. So it's, it's you know, it's, it is a great blue, but it, it, you it know, every good thing has a bad side, I guess. So it's, it's, it's you know, Wonderful. a bit different. Wonderful. Well, I thank you for keeping up with the ink encyclopedias. Is there another one in the works? Are we taking another poll, or you already have uh, something slated? Well, another one is finished, finished. Actually, the only thing I should yes, well, finished is not the right word because it's not. It's been shot and it's been edited. Now I just got to you know create the the full video, uh, and that one is on Gerbon. I said a bon. I, I'm, I'm I'm starting to get American <laughs> well, at guys. At least we understood you. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's good. So it's on J. Herbon, um the um, uh, 1670, if I'm not mistaken. So that's the 1670, Rouget uh, Matite. Um, and that was, uh, I'm sure everyone knows, uh, that was uh, a limited edition ink. And then I think they, they, they sort of started producing that in mass anyway. Um, that's a very interesting red, I think. It's when it's it's wet, it's really like, Venus blood, so it's like really red, red. Uh, when it dries, it gets a bit darker, and it's it's it, especially in a broad nib, it develops a sort of gold Dan, sheen, which you either Dan, like or you did don't. Did you hear him say yeah. it was like Venus blood? <laughs> That's Is that what an I... expression that I'm not familiar with. <laughs> now it's blood. Now, it's not. okay, so uh, you, you have you have you have blood in your arteries, which is a. Um, um, Oh wait! I think it's actually okay, arterial, arterial blood. blood. Well, that's very much the redder. So, the redder uh, the, of the, the two. You yes. got, you, yeah, the 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 less. I think the Venus. No, the Venus so blood when you is say actually Venus, dark. You don't mean dark the, red. The, the, the goddess. I don't mean the planet okay. Venus. Okay. No, 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 no. I mean like from far from your veins. Your veins as Venus. Opposed okay. To, okay. Okay. Please continue, yes. Doctor. Because then it doesn't. No. So, so the, the, the thank you. The, the uh, I'll, I'll send you the bill for the checkup later. Um, now the. Uh, um, so the, the arterial blood, I think, contains a lot of oxygen, and then it's, it's bright red, and the, uh, the, the blood in your veins actually is, is depleted of oxygen, and then it's, it's darker red. So this is just a, a bit of, of medical so stuff. So is this um, the darker which I'm not red? Sure I got this is Gerbon? Okay. Yeah. Well, I think you could say that if it's when it's wet, it's like arterial blood, because it's really blood, uh, bright red. When it dries, it's more like okay. ven venous blood, right. because it's wow. um, actually uh, <laughs> now, much darker. So you get all when it types dries, of blood how does it paper. compare? You know, we'll probably talk about this ink in the future with next time you're on the show. But how does it compare to uh, diamine ox blood? Uh, it's, it's it's lighter, lighter. Okay. I think. So ox I think is ox blood is, is 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 darker. Yeah. So that's that's uh, especially when it dries, it's it's very dark. And this, I think, is redder. I think ox blood is a bit looks you know, more like dry blood. To me. I don't know. I it's, mean. It's, it's, yeah, yeah. It is. It is. And and. Um, they could have called it dry scab. I, I, yeah, they they could have called that. They call it like uh, a terrible injury uh, ink or something. But it's uh, it's you know it's actually I, I think you can still see it on my fingers. Uh, when I when I finished cleaning my pens after shooting this, it was like I came from a surgery ward or something. It was like all red and and, and deeply. So that was uh, bloody stuff, bloody man. Stuff. It was gory. Do, do you have any questions about this, or or you, have you already seen the video, or you're just enjoying the ride? Are you? I've been fastened in, and All I'm right. ready You're to go. You're up next. So. You have to fill us in on our, our, our spy work. It's Operation Edison Infiltration Complete. Um, you know, a few months ago, we had talked about Camp Edison and, and going there because we had bought some pens, and we were going to watch them be made, get some inside info. This was really just a big cover for us planting cameras and, and software there so that we could get a, a peek at the next pin that Edison is going to be making. Unfortunately, we missed out on the, the LE sim, semi-stealth Glenmont. 
Um, we, we couldn't get, get, get any good images of it. But we did get some images of the caps of their new production pin, which is the Beaumont. Um, and here you, you can see the, the caps and, and the cap bands and everything. Um, it, it worked out really well. Um, and then a few days later, the pin was actually released. The Edison Beaumont is available in three colors, black onyx flake, bedrock flake, and sapphire yeah, flake. Color? Oh, the sapphire oh, really? flake by I, I far. I lean towards the black. I don't know why. Well, really? the blue one is probably my, my third favorite of the three. <laughs> That's it's a good thing we never find about pins. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Please continue. I'm sorry. So th those are the three colors. The pin is a little bit smaller than what we're used to seeing come from Edison, but it's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, it, it's still a, a fairly large pin, you know, relative to others. It, it's five and one eighth inch long, um, 0 .46, 0 0.46 inches in diameter. I mean, it's almost half an inch in diameter. But I think the proportions will look really good, especially with the number six size nib that comes in it. Um, there's two options for the nib. You can get stainless steel or 18 karat gold. If you go for the stainless steel version, you have choices of extra fine, fine, medium, broad. And if you go for the gold upgrade, um, you only get fine, medium, and broad. Still a pretty good selection. Uh, the Beaumont is a cartridge converter filler and starts at 150 bucks with a steel nib. Um, I think that's an awesome price. It is. It's, it's, it's a production yeah. line, awesome price, available only from uh, Edison's retailers. And But, I, I mean, I hope I see one in D.C. Well, it, the Andersons will be there, and I'm sure they'll have some if Brian doesn't happen to have it. He's got to have at least one to show. Um, and if you do want to opt for the gold nib, uh, that pin will be 275 And like Eric said, this is a production line pin, so they're not available from Edison Direct. You have to get them from one of his retailers, which right now it's five of them, and that's Anderson Pins, Gold Spot Luxury Gifts, Goulet Pin Company, I Sell Pins, and Richard Bender. And now so. Doc needs to chime in. Have you, have you, have you seen the yes, pictures, I was, Doc? I, I, yes, I have. I have. I have them uh, right here. I'm looking at one. Yeah, I, I'm not sure whether that's what the, what the viewers have seen, but um, I, there is one with a, a sort of a, a gray thing going on. Yeah, that's the, that's the stealth green, version. Brown, Thing. Brian, I hope you hear okay. this. Okay, ah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's a, there's a blue version. And what I was wondering about is the, um, uh, the the green and brown version is the only one that seems to have a gold clip and a gold center band. Is that is that an option? Like when you get the gold nib, you also get a gold clip? Do we know? Or is, is that just only the green version has, a, has the gold details? Or am I just completely seeing this wrong? Only the bedrock flake has the gold colored hardware right okay. you're seeing it correctly yes i think okay now that's that's i mean it, with me you never know right uh, no that's uh, that that's that's great I, I think they look really really nice one thing i i'm i'm just wondering about and i wouldn't mind either way but would, would you be able to post yes, these they maybe post. you don't know but i mean it, it, it looks they like they, they post okay because the, the end sort of the the blind cap thing looks like it that the, the cap might just fall off. I, I have no idea, but it's, no, it's, it's just... it's a deep so posting um, cap. It, oh, it, really? It, it posts rather deep, and you probably want to post. You especially, Doc Brown, would want to post this pen. Yes. Um, even I would probably post this pen. It's. Uh, I get the idea that it's basically the same size-ish as the Pearlette, um, but it's a completely different shape. So I really want to see it in real life. It's It's a winner. Yeah, so do I, because I, I, I think it looks gorgeous. I really think this is a, a beautiful It's beautiful, pen. and, so and be very I, I don't see. mind small pens serve a purpose for me. I like to have small pens. Um, you know, and this is the second of the Edison small pen line, the Pearlette, and now a production line pen. You know, I'm glad he's keeping us happy, because where is that Mini, the Twisby Mini? Who knows? <laughs> if, if Until then, we have this one. Apt, um, Brian does give that measurement at his website for this, so we just didn't include it in our post. Right, and I'm sure it's at every retailer's uh, website as well. Um, and from the very affordable Beaumont, shall we move on to something else, Mr. Smith? <laughs> something that's, that's not, not so not quite affordable. As affordable. Maybe even a little larger. I don't know. 
Uh, this is the Mont Blanc Artisan Edition Macbeth, directed by Max Reinhardt. Um, it's a limited edition, and th this is part of um, the, the Max Reinhardt series of pens that they've been doing since 2003. It's in association in association with the Salzburg Festival, and this that's a, a festival that Mont Blanc heavily supports. Um, we we have a lot of information about that at the website. Um, but a, a lot of you are probably familiar with this line, double, double, toil and trouble, fire, burn, and cauldron bubble. Um, it's, it's with these words that the spell is cast by the three witches who are visited by the royal commander Macbeth to have his destiny foretold. And this is the scene that's engraved in three-dimensional relief on the sterling silver cap. I mean, it's it's very intricately detailed. I mean, I, I couldn't imagine the, the time and, and effort that it took to create this cap. But uh, the, the barrel is made of red jasper, and it symbolizes the bloodshed and sorrow caused by Macbeth. It includes a rhodium-plated 18-karat gold nib, and there's a silhouette of the fortress of Ho Hohenzelsburg. He's, he's asking for Hopefully. a correction, Doc Brown. Yes, I was Hohenzelsburg, I guess, but I'm, I'm not sure. Yes. Salzburg is what I'm uh, reading, but do we need to know? Or Salzburg. Hohen, Hohen oh, Salzburg. Salzburg, yeah. So like high... So, uh, this is Salzburg. North Salzburg. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so that <laughs> is... <laughs> the star on the top is made of... <laughs> and it looks huge. I, I love that design where they just have that giant star on the top. The pin is only limited to 20 pieces worldwide, and it's only available during the Salzburg Summer Festival, which takes place from July 20th to September 2nd. Um, now, now, hold on to your wallets here. This sells for 15,000 euros, which is approximately $18,500. Is it cartridge converter? I, I didn't catch that, Dan. It's not. No, it's not. I, I really don't think in, in the world of Mont Blanc, a, a limited edition of 20 for 15,000 euro? I, I, I don't think it's... Yeah. I wouldn't have been surprised to see it twice that price. Compared to their other limited editions with, with only 20 pieces, I would have guessed, you know, 30 or 40. There's what? There's Easy. 88 of the red Alfred Hitchcock? And it's 27,000 or so. So, yeah. This is a bargain. We should all get one. <laughs> I have I have one question about yes. it. Does the um, does this come in a box shaped like a cauldron? Because that would be awesome. That would be awesome for us, but I doubt Mont Blanc went that way. <laughs> yeah, so do I. But uh, you know, we can ask. Uh, my understanding is that it's... Mont Blanc is at the DC Pen Show. I, I've never seen them in oh. LA. I've never seen them in Chicago, but I think they're at the at the DC show. That I'll I'll push you up to their table, and you can ask that very question. And sure. I'll be running Sounds a camera great. when you do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that that will be. I mean, this would be so awesome to just go there and say, "I am actually considering buying one, but I wanted to come with a cauldron. Otherwise, it's like a deal breaker." So, could you please? Could you make like an iron cast? You probably uh, have to go to the Salzburg be, Film Festival that. for that. They're not going to have one of these pens. Right, Maybe true. they'll have some other things. No, with. No. This show is really sure. going to the dogs, don't you think? <laughs> Thanks to Okami sharing her passion for her dogs, uh, Coda and Jules made their debut at Fountain Pen Geeks this past week. Uh, and it was a very popular post. Uh, and I said that as if I was surprised. But who was surprised that dogs are popular? I have two. Julie has two. Doc Brown, I think I hear a dog barking from time to time in the background at your place. Uh huh. Yes, that's true. And, and mm -hmm. Mrs. Dan Smith uh, is a, a veterinary technician. Yeah, so yes. everybody loves animals, um, and I hope other people follow suit here and, and share pa other passions with us that we can show to the world. Yes, we all love fountain pens or fountain pen geeks, but there are a few other dimensions to our personalities, and Coda and Jules here, it was, it was nice to have them at the website, and I thank Okami very much for uh, providing that information. Any comments from the peanut sure. gallery? Okay, it was very. It cool. was very cool. I thought it was very nice. It was very nice to, to see this. Actually, this was, I think, this was a breed of dog I wasn't even a, familiar a with, uh, which, 
yeah, which probably says more about me than than about the dogs. But but still, um, it's it's. Uh, I I do think it's very nice, you know, to just see what 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 other stuff occupies people's minds. So that's um, very cool. Yep. Where should we go, Mister Smith? I think we need to talk All about right, some pen talk cases. About some pen cases. And particularly the Quiver pen case, which is a Kickstarter project by Alicia Klein. Now, this pen case, it's a three-sleeve case, and each sleeve um, should be large enough to hold two, you know, regular-sized pens. I mean, I don't think you're going to fit two 149s in each. Um, but a lot of her pictures show two pens in each. Two of the sleeves have an open top, and one has a snap closure. Each sleeve is sewn together along a common edge. So this kind of gives the look of the, the fletching or veins on an arrow around the shaft. So, so you've kind of got the three spread you out from the, the center. At the end of an arrow? arrow? But the real yes. word for those feathers is fletching? Or veins. Or vein. oh, cool. yes. Because either you or, or your wife are archers, right? We both, uh, so we both are. That's the sim- real word for that. See, I just call them feathers. Huh? <laughs> so actually should we should we then call feathering Fletcher. fletchering or, or how's that ink? oh it fletchers like crazy <laughs> but this pen's got some great nibbage please continue mr smith <laughs> the, the pens, um seem to be really high quality they're made from 100 percent italian cowhide leather they're available in several colors and prints and they're not too expensive. I mean, a $30 pledge will get you a quiver pin case, and that includes free domestic shipping. If the project is funded, expected delivery is around October. There's 17 days to go. They've got 103 backers, and they're slightly over $5,200 in pledges of their $7,000 goal. So it looks like they'll I'm probably going make, to make it. it. It looks pretty cool. I, I personally wouldn't use it, but I think uh, uh, Maya needs one of these. We know how many pens she has, but she might need a real, a real pen case. But this is perfect for something you throw in your in your purse. If, um, but the name though sounded familiar to me, the, uh, the quiver. Well, quiver is actually the thing that holds the Yes, I know what quiver is. <laughs> I meant I meant as a pen case, it was familiar to me, um, but I let it go. And then Maya mentioned that sh- she thought it was familiar too in the comments, and I thought, okay. I, maybe it was Tyler Dahl. I thought I saw him do a review of something called a quiver that was a pen holder that attached to your notebook, like your moleskin or something. I, so I went searching for that, and I found that something called a quiver that attaches to a notebook that, uh, instead of in threes like this, um, is available at like at AndersonPens.net. They sell it. So I wonder what we're going to do with the name. If there's already a pen holding device called a quiver, but you know that's not for us to decide. It's, it's still, still cool, cool, right? I think so. And this so. one I actually it, looks more yeah. like a quiver. Definitely, I'm not sure how how um, because it's sort of I'm nitpicking again, but it, it I think it's a it's a great idea, and I think it looks beautiful. The only thing I wonder is how do you, if you would say put this in a, a shirt pocket and something would like stick out quite a bit i'm, I'm not sure how well i i, I guess as you said you just just yeah, throw I don't this think in a bag or something that's uh, no 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 i think most pouches aren't really but it, it's uh i i do think it's a very creative and very original idea and i may actually consider getting one well, you, you just go to kickstarter you pledge now and and yes uh, they'll ship yes. one to you long before the twisby mini Yes, I'm going to keep mentioning it. Hopefully they're listening. Where should we go now, Mr. Smith? Or were you not finished? All right. I was finished. We, we could do something that you definitely need to be reading. I mean, of, of course, you need to stop by FP Geeks every day. But your second stop for the day on the Internet should be Chronicus Estilograficus. And this is an amazing blog written by uh, uh, Bruno Tot. I hope I pronounced his name right. Sorry about that if I didn't. And he had... Lots of Japanese-themed posts. He, he covers um, vintage Japanese pen stuff. He covers um, nib meisters from Japan that do just radical things with nibs. Um, a lot of very, very cool stuff. The, the post that really sent me over the edge and said, okay, I have got to spread the word about this guy, was his post comparing these vanishing points from 
um, I think what early 60s or, or mid 60s and there was a long one and there was a short one and they were both yes. stickered and I that just <laughs> blew my mind there he talks about their history how they were made and the, it was it was an amazing post I, I loved it so I was like I got to share but this be everybody. careful when you go because you can spend the whole day there oh my gosh yeah. easily I don't know if you've had a chance to visit Mr. Smith um, uh, Doc Brown yeah, I did, and I thought, yeah, it's 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 very nice. It's uh, I mean, I'm I'm not a, I don't think I own a whole lot of Japanese pens, but still, uh, he he the, the the author seems to really put a lot of work in in what he writes, and it seems very well researched. So I yeah, I I really liked it. It was it was a good thing to to share that because I, I wasn't aware of this before. Well, so it's, uh, we might have it's to very take cool. care of your Japanese pen deficiency while we're in D.C. This list is getting very long. Yes, we have exactly. to send you to Mont Blanc. We have to get you a, a Parker 51. We have to get you a Japanese pen. We have to take you to the Apple store. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Should we go to Italy? Yeah. From yeah. Japan, shall we go to Italy? Sounds so very logical. Aurora is coming out with a, a new version of the Optima, the Nero Perla. And I thought this would be a perfect pen for Captain Jack Sparrow. But before we get into the pen, Eric, did you get that pop culture reference? Captain Jack Sparrow? Captain Jack Sparrow. Is, is that what's the one you're talking about because of the Black Pearl? All right. Yes, I got that one. I got that Let's one. Just make... <laughs> Check these things. <laughs> so this pen is made from a very special variegated gray oroloid. Um, it, it's, it's a very interesting color. I think it looks fabulous with that rhodium plated trim. It is, of course, a piston filling fountain pen. It has a rhodium plated 14 karat gold nib, and it comes in a variety of options as long as you order from nibs.com. I cannot confirm these options for any other retailer. Um, if you order it from nibs.com, you have the option of extra fine, fine, oblique fine, oblique fine reverse, medium, oblique medium, <laughs> oblique medium reverse. Oblique broad, oblique broad reverse, double broad, stub and italic. Is that palette. factory? Or is this coming, because it's coming from nibs.com, John's going to do this for you? Wow. I believe those are factory because he also has on his site um, the Aurora nib or pen tester set. You, you can buy a set of pens, a nib in it. And so, so you get, what is that one? eight or ten different pens with a different nib in each one. I mean, it'd be a, a fortune to spend, but, you know, the option's wow. there. Well, uh, John will be in D.C. as well. I certainly hope he has one of these pens with him. John will not, not be in D.C.? DC. He will be in Dallas, and he will be in San Francisco, but he will not be in D.C. I guess I'll wait for Los Angeles again, then. <laughs> Why can't you? I might be able to do San Francisco. You could do San Francisco. That, when is that, October? Yeah. I believe so. If I'm in the country, I might do San Francisco. All right. Um, the, the Aurora Optima Nero Perla is available as a fountain pen, rollerball, and ballpoint. Should be available around the end of September at an SRP of 595, 475 and 365 respectively. So just under 600 bucks for the fountain pen. Um, I, I love the Optima. I love the shape. Good looking pen. Um, can't it's wait for it to come out. I would like to see it in real life. You know sure. what I was when I was thinking about this pen? If you if you take a look at there was a, a picture on your website with sort of gray colored pen. Um, I think it looks great. And I'm I'm looking back at the um, uh, the Edison Beaumont. Yeah, it's the same thing, and, isn't it? <laughs> uh, and it's the same color, but the the clip kind of has a resemblance with the ball. And then at the end of the barrel, you got the sort of black and the yeah. cap. So I'm thinking Aurora may have hacked into the Edison household. May have seen this and thought, "Oh, let's come out with a pen that looks just like it," because it's kind of scary, right? But okay, well, anyway. Yeah, I, I see the what resemblance. And I, I mean, that's 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 fine. I mean, I think that that the, um, I, I, I mean, I'm not not, not implying anything. Right? Oh, you I mean, it's you just stated it blatantly. I, it, it's, it wasn't it's, an implication. 
<laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> no, but I, I, I think it's, uh, I think it's awesome. I think that the both. I mean, the, the, the Edison panel. I also think this Aurora is very nice. There's this very wide center band on the. That was my there. first thought. So you know, but I, thing. I talk, I, I say that I don't like center bands so often. I thought I was just going to let it slide. It's a little big for me. No, then I'll it's just a say it. Big for me. Yeah. And it has these, in, in, in pretty big letters, it has Aurora on it. I'm sorry, I'm tilting my head, but I'm just trying to check the picture here. Um, it, it says Aurora quite, I, I, I'm not I, sure. I can't see that but detail I do from think, here. Is it, is it, what kind of font? Is it the cursive curly font or is it? No, it's like, it's like Arial or something. It's like a really sans uh, font. Okay, with, so it's uh, the nicer font. Okay. Like block. Yeah, and it's it's not. I mean, it's. I, I don't think it's it's particularly distracting or anything because it's probably just they sort of, you know took the picture to, to highlight that. Um, actually, I I'm I'm not sure. I think it's actually kind of cool because it looks it looks a bit transparent or something. Maybe I'm I'm just talking are, gibberish but now. It's but okay. It, it, That's it, why we have actually. You here. I yeah. Well, exactly, exactly. So I'll talk some more. So I think it's it's pretty cool. What I do like is this meandering shape. I think that's that's no. kind of nice. Maybe a bit too strong. For me personally, but I do think it's a, it's a nice design. Well, I think it's a beautiful pet. Um, I want to see one in real life before I say buy it. Yeah, Dan. Yeah. So do I. And that I am gonna say buy it too is the Schaefer Tyrannus. This is a new original design, and I absolutely love it. It's designed by renowned U.S. architect Charles Debus. And it gets its name from the Celtic god of thunder, Tyrannus. I don't know. Uh, that sounds yes, very Tyrannus. scary. Or Tyrannus? Uh, the, it features a hooded nib, something I've not seen in a long time. Um, it's, it's not Parker 51 hooded. It's, it's more kind of like vintage Aurora, Aurora 88 hooded. You know, it's got, hooded. It, it, yeah, it's, it sticks out a little bit, which I like. Um, the patent pending grip section, I think, is very unique. It it combines resin and steel, so you don't have that that cold, slick, you know, metal section. You, you've got a combination of resin, which I think really helps with the the grip, and plus, it just feels a lot better than steel, in my opinion. Um, the the long, sleek, spring loaded clip, I looks fantastic, and I think I hate to say this. But I think the ballpoint actually looks the best. It's that strip. Oh, we lost Doc Brown. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. He said looks. No, he, he said looks right. only, looks. Yeah. No, but I think there's actually something to that. Yeah. Because I, I love how that, um, that, that center band down the grip goes and almost touches the clip. It's, I don't know, it just provides for, for very nice visuals. Um, but this is available in five different colors, fountain pen, rollerball, ballpoint. It comes with a steel nib and fine, medium, or broad options at a really good price point. It ranges from 125 to 165 And this was originally supposed to be available around the beginning of November, but it was pushed back to uh, 2013 launch just before we published the article. So I don't know why it got pushed back, but I really can't wait for it. You like this pen. Are we going to get the ballpoint? Like yeah, Please. good. We all need one ballpoint. You know, Doc Brown says he doesn't like ballpoints, blah, 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 but he's got at least one. Yeah. I'm going to buy the ballpoint. What's that, Dan? I'm not going to buy the ballpoint. Why Why would I buy the ballpoint? <laughs> You're, it's a, it's a, I mean, you yeah. said it looked cool. I mean, you know. But it's not a fountain pen. Of course I'm not going <laughs> to all right, all right. He's not going to buy them. Which one are you going to buy? <laughs> okay. Since you seem so taken with these, uh, probably buy the one pictured, the the black and shiny chrome. The one, one. that kind of looks like a vanishing point. The the old school ones with the. I see that. Now. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, obviously, the vanishing point doesn't have a cap, but that section on the the Schaefer looks like the end of the vanishing point. Um, nice looking pen. Nice looking pen. Yeah, very cool. Anything else? 
And does that? Oh yeah, yeah. I see. No, I, I was just checking. I, it looks like the um, the white lightning has gold trims, but then it says in the picture white lightning featuring gold play trim. So that's cleared up. Yeah. No, I I, I like it. I think it's very nice. It's it's a very very typical design, um, and it's it's. At the very least, it's it's very original. So, and, and then the, the the price is really nice. That's a very interesting. I think the, bet. the mystery yeah, is why has one. the release been pushed back? That that would be nice yeah. to know. Well, the factory the factory has been struck oh, okay. by lightning. Thank you for clearing that up for us, That's Doc true. Brown. Yeah. Speaking of factories being struck by lightning, what's with Aurora lowering prices? Uh, yeah, they're smart. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, while we've got Pelican and Lammy, you know, raising their prices anywhere from 15 to 20 percent, Aurora drops theirs, you know, seven to, to 15, even 18 percent on some models, um, which, man, I, I love Aurora. Thank you. Thank you, Aurora. I'm almost certain my next pen is going to be an Aurora. Um, but, you know, not every single pen has been reduced. So definitely head to our website, take a look at the complete price sheet to see if, you know, something that you were looking at has been reduced. But, you know, it's, it's a heck of a lot better than prices increasing. So And, and the, with these price decreases for Aurora, are they now less expensive than Pelican after Pelican's price increases? Or I suppose it depends on the model you're looking for. But comparable models, if, if there is such a thing between Pelican and Aurora... No, I I really haven't compared the offerings directly between the two, so I I couldn't say. I mean, it, good. We'll have I to figure know. that out on our own then. Anything else before we move on, gentlemen? No. Let's take yeah. a let's take a Steve? look at Ira Stone's daily carry pens. Yeah, he's got a nice little setup. Um, he carries either ten or twelve pens in a case. And then what I found surprising was he has three more in a shirt pocket right, for because, emergencies. You know, just in case anything happens to those 12 pens in your pen case, you need a couple of echoes and a, and a jitterbug in your pocket. Be prepared. Absolutely. Be prepared. Um, the one I really liked was the, the Franklin Kristoff Model 25 because I have one of those and I love it. And also the Micarta. Is, yeah, you know, that's one of my favorites. Sure. And of course... I'm sorry, you faded on that last pen which you were mentioning, Dan? I was just said, uh, and of course, I love yeah. that Lamy 2000. What do you think about that Lamy accent? I, th I think that's a good looking <laughs> uh, identity crisis. Identity but, uh, crisis. Uh, it is a good looking pen. It is not a Lamy accent. Um, but I remember when they first hit our website, uh, this is, of course, the Faber Castell Loom fountain pen. Um, I, I intended to get one of those pens, and I never did. <laughs> so uh, I'm glad Ira reminded me. Now I can think about getting one again and probably forget all over again. What I found fascinating was, well, he's got three Edison pens. So in the, in his 10-pen yes. case, this is a 12-pen case. In his 12-pen case, Edison is 25% of his pens. And that, that got me to thinking... It seems as if every one of our daily carry people, with a, a notable exception being a person who's actually on the screen with us right now, <laughs> has had at least one Edison pen. And there have been some that didn't have one in their daily carry, but I know they own one. This, the Edison pens are everywhere. I'm going to start calling Brian Gray America's pen maker, and I hope it catches on. We've got the Queen of Ink. You know who that is. Susan Worth. We've got the Queen of Estherbrook. Um, I can't think of any kings that we have off the top of my head, but I think, you know, it's time uh, to to give, dub someone uh, with a new title. America's Penmaker sounds good for Brian, doesn't it? Yeah. I'm sure, I like it. Maker. Uh, we'll just leave it at that. Unless anybody has anything to say about the Irish pens. No, oh, they're, they're great. That's just beautiful. And I, I really like someone actually, what you said, I mean, someone just actually carrying two Cavecos and another one just, just to be prepared. That's just cool. I really, I really like that, that jitter bug, by the way. It's like, it, it looks you, You'll see those cool in DC. And handy. Uh, they're tiny. Um, well, you can see the clip is yeah. half the pen, if not more. Um, yeah. So that's a really cool. nice uh, pocket pen. Really nice pocket pen. 
Should we, should we do some drawing then, perhaps? I mean, don't mean drawing for a pen. I mean drawing as in cartoon drawing. <laughs> we for. should. Well, since uh, you you came up with this idea, I think you should introduce it to us. It's the the uh, Fountain Pen Geek's first annual bad cartoon contest, where uh, nobody needs any talent and everybody's a winner. So that was the entire premise: is that don't be afraid to use your pen, draw something and send it in so we can share it with the world and send you all the accolades, even if it's only two, but you'll get them, I promise. We've already had some, some entries, uh, and they hit the website that was only yesterday. Um, uh, Tim Hoffman, uh, who is known in our boards as uh, Manover, or Manover, uh, he was the first one. I think he sent this in the day it hit. And, and I kind of thought of him while I was making the post. I think he's going to send one in. I didn't know he was going to do it that, same, that very same day. Uh, but he just, he, he grabbed a Reform 7045 in the back of an envelope and sketched out a cartoon, uh, very appropriately, a bad cartoon, uh, and, <laughs> and sent it in. And uh, then we got one from uh, DJ K sent another one in uh, that was... Uh, a storyboard type uh, and uh, they're both posted in large size at the website so you can actually read the text uh, this is gonna be fun I think it's gonna be fun um, Dan you are gonna submit something aren't you because you've got wonderful artistic ability that nonsense. I don't know you got that but you're gonna submit something right you're no I'm not because it's you come up with this content and it's, it's I'm sorry, you're fading out. I, I, you're going to have to repeat that whole thing. I, I was just saying, you, you create this whole contest about bad drawing, um, you know, bad cartoons, and then, then you post yours. And yours is hilarious. It's, it totally looks like it would belong in a newspaper. It's like, how are we supposed to compete with that? You know, you... <laughs> are way too high. Well, I appreciate the compliment you're trying to give me, but there isn't, I, I dare anyone who's listening to this podcast to look at the cartoon I drew, try to copy it and not make it better. Because it's just, it's just, I, I can't draw. I'm surprised they actually look like balloons. Do you even know that they're balloons? Absolutely. Yeah, no, that, that was, was completely clear. Okay. clear. Yeah, that was... All right, yeah. so... No, so I gotta... Dan is bowing yeah. out of this contest. Uh, we'll work on you. He's not going to DC I'm, and he's not going to do a cartoon for us. We'll have to work on him. But how about you, Doc Brown? Well, I, I, I'm, I'm looking at one right now. I can probably show you. I'll probably have to tell you a bit about what you see. Is this something you're going to submit? Sure oh. Yes. Just give us a glimpse, but don't tell, don't tell us about it. Okay. Well, it, it, uh, you know what? I'll, I'll just give you a description without actually telling you what you see. Now, that's okay. going to be interesting. It's, it's, it's a, a sort of two-panel thing. On the one side, it says how fountain pen people see themselves. On oh, the other side, it says how all others see fountain pen people. From the brain of Doc Brown, this is going to be funny. Yes. So you'll get that to me. Post so right? you'll yeah, just okay. have to wait and see. Uh, you got to get that to me, though, before you leave for D.C. Yeah, I, I already took a picture, but it, it wasn't too great. So I, because I don't really have a scanner here, I can use. So I'll I'll have to see how I. But I I will get it to you. That's uh, absolutely. Don't certain. they have scanning places? Um. Yeah, they do. I, I could do it at at my my work, but then it, it turns really weird and sort of gravelly um, and, and strange. Well, so I'm it's, but I, sure I, I, I can take I probably find some. action is necessary. Get that to us. I will, you know, I will, right? I mean, I could, I, I could put it in a carrier pigeon <laughs> and, and throw it straight at you. That's that's how we send emails in the Netherlands anyway. So it's it's. Uh, well, you yeah, could mail. That'll it. work. That that is an option. Yes, I could. I actually, I could. We'll we'll, we'll figure that out. We could we you can actually what? figure that I'll, out I'll while it. we're not on the air. Dan, yeah. shall we talk about an yeah. awesome review? Yes, we should because. It was actually a really great pen, the Tree Ring Natural History Fountain Pen. Um, this was sent to us by Dave Wager of Tree Ring Pens. Um, it got a geek factor of 7.3. Really, really good looking pen. Um, I had a little bit of an issue with the grip, and I think that's really going to be the biggest concern, is if you can get along with the grip, you're going to love the pen. Um, but thankfully, with Dave's awesome return policy, 
if you don't like it, you, you can send it back for a refund. So um, th the pen did really well. One of the best nibs out of the box that I've ever used. Um, it was smooth. It was wet. It was, I mean, no complaints whatsoever. And then th the wood, I mean, wow. Just the, the tree rings, I mean, they're, they're so easy to see. The, the story behind it is just just really great. It's, I, I love the pen. I love the idea of the pen. It's, it's a fantastic piece. I like the pen very much, especially because of the dates on the rings of the piece of wood. Uh, that just speaks to me for some reason. The, the, the way a vintage pen would speak to me uh, with its stories and its age. Uh, I said in the review that this is like holding a piece of time in your hand. Um, the particular pen that we got started to grow in 1884, I believe. Um, the only issue I had was also with the grip. I, it's, for me, it is not a pen I can use for extended writing periods, but it, it's fine for making quick notes. Uh, what is also fascinating, aside from the fact that uh, the, you can see and, and with a loop actually count the rings on the barrel of this pen and, and the beginning and the end on this particular pen have been marked for you so you know what year starts where, uh, Dave, uh, who owns and, and makes the pen, owns, the, owns tree ring pens and makes these pens, actually harvests the wood himself. And yes. I just... He is a, a forest ecologist um, uh, and, and finds the, the trees that need to be um, culled from old growth forests, marks them and, and fells them and makes them into pens. You know, he drags them back. He's, a, he's the fountain pen community's Paul Bunyan. Absolutely. And I loved that line <laughs> in the review, by the way. And he's a nice guy. Uh, we, we, we met him in Los oh, Angeles. I had some questions about the pen for the review, uh, so I think I called him twice because, <laughs> you know, you always think of another question after you hang up the phone. Uh, he's just a nice guy, fascinating to talk with, especially if you want to talk about either fountain pens or forests. And, and of course, I can talk about forests <laughs> for a long time because I don't know anything about forests other than you can't see them when there's too many trees. Ha, ha, ha. Let's move on. Ha, ha, ha. Sorry. <laughs> He doesn't go out and just cut down any trees for these pens. Um, the, these are trees that come from old growth forests that, that they're clearing out, which is actually helping the forest because what should happen naturally was, you know, very small fires would, would come through the forest and, and clean out these uh, pens. Not the pens, then. And then that <laughs> so, <laughs> Well, actually, they are now pens, but yes, the fires would clean out some the, of the, the smaller, weaker trees. And so it would make it a healthier living environment for the old growth trees. And since we don't really have those small fires anymore, uh, they have to go through and, and cut them out themselves. And he has, Dave has a lot of really good information about that at his website, treeringpins.com. Um, please go check it out and, and read up about that. Doc Brown, you have the floor. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I haven't used uh, these pens myself, but I, I did read the review and I, I thought, they they sound very very interesting. I, I can completely relate to you what you said about you sort of hold not just a piece of history but the time in your hands because you can just see time passing in a very very physical way. I, and the only other thing I guess that does that is a watch, um, but that's not really as as spectacular. Um, I I yeah I, it sounds really really cool. I. I the, I think you said something. Like they they will be in DC yes. too, or, no, or you Dave, will bring Dave will yours be, to DC uh, in DC with a bunch of pens. Okay, and you know I'm not usually a fan right. of wooden pens. I don't think I don't have a wooden no. pen. Um, no. You know, I'm, maybe maybe I was somewhat attracted to the Amerigo Vespucci because it had a piece of wood from the actual ship, uh, but I never never I guess I never saw one in real life. Um, but this one is completely different, just because. It started to grow in 1884. I don't know why that's so appealing to me, but it is. And, and so if it is to I, you too, it's a, it's a I, very I nice think, pen. I think you, you maybe you mentioned that in the review because that's probably where I got this idea. But is it not also possible when you when you order one of these pens to, to have a specific ring mark? So, for example, you know, this year is, I don't know, whatever, uh, very important to me because I did this or that. And then you can, can have that mark too. Absolutely. Is, is, is yes. that possible? Uh, um, yes. 
that would I think that would be very very cool, right? Because then it's it's really right, personal you know, for your anniversary, your wedding, your birthday, sure. uh, retirement, whatever. Um, and he hand stamps the time you maybe you could also have it marked that uh, for the time the, the actual for the year that you did not attend the DC Pan Ooh. Super Show. That's, uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> have you got Sorry. have you got Brian Gray in a chat on the side there, Doc Brown? Is he giving you lines? Well, I I, I got my own camera patched <laughs> into the house, so I you know I, I know what he was saying. Well, speaking of the tree ring pen, Dan, what are we going to do with it? You know, it's sitting here. It's sitting here on my we desk. I, I used uh, diamine ochre, and it was the first time I used it. No, can't hear you. We we've got a infographic to talk about oh we want to talk about the infographic okay bring that up yes. i don't have a graphic for that <laughs> i don't have a graphic for the infographic so we'll just have to go for it it's fine um because you did you did just post this this morning uh it's the infographic for the franklin christoph giveaway and like everybody else i absolutely love these i mean it's infographics are just awesome but when they involve fountain pens it doesn't get any cooler than that um, we have 241 entries. Unfortunately, seven forgot to include Franklin Christoph rocks. That's that's really sad to hear. Um, I, I love that you included the little happy and sad faces there. <laughs> so, um, we've got uh, new entries from Argentina, uh, Caraco, and New Zealand. Um, we've never had entries for those. Those three countries, right? That That's is what that, what that means. means. We have received, uh, to be quite honest with everyone, and just in case you're listening, someone did send a postcard for the Edison Pen uh, uh, contest from New Zealand. Uh, the return address, though, was from Australia, and it arrived like a week late. So this was the first official entry from New Zealand that actually made it in time. And this was from a different person, someone who actually lives in, Aust in, in New Zealand. And... Uh, Argentina is the first time, and Curacao, Curacao, um, which I actually had to use Google Maps to find. <laughs> the, yeah, I don't think tiny I tiny island. I knew its general location, but I didn't realize it was, I mean, is, is it still a Dutch colony or independent? or? Um, yeah. This is oh, okay. complex. We can skip I, it. I, <laughs> no, I, I mean, no, 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 no. The, 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 I think the, the very short answer is is that it's it's like, I think, now I have to figure out the English word. I think it's like a municipality oh, okay. or something. So it's like an, an own, like it's, it's sort of, it, it works by itself, but it is still, it's not really Dutch property, I would say, because then the, the, the people over there get really angry when you do that. Um, but it's, it is still... Um, there are still Sometimes. connections Somehow. between the okay. Netherlands and the Yeah, exactly, exactly. A common language? Uh, yeah, they do speak Dutch there. And they also speak Papiamento, which is a, a mixture of um, Dutch and Spanish, if wow. I'm not now mistaken. That would be an interesting thing to hear. Uh, but they're not using the euro. They have a currency all their own. Uh, I think they use the Antillian Gilder, Gilder okay. and I don't think they use the, uh, okay. the Euro. All right, no. they're completely separate, and I know where they are now, just in case it ever comes up on Jeopardy or something like that. I hear it's a nice island, so, um, you know. Yeah, well, it's Caribbean, should be nice. Uh, anything else you like about that exactly. infographic there, Mr. Smith? Um. Well, a lot of things, but uh, just a few other points. It seems black is the most popular cover. Um, apparently, blank paper was the most popular choice of um, medium to use. Um, it, it's good to see that a majority of people still know how to write in cursive. I like that. Um, oh, and then I, I saw that that one person sent in an IBM yes. punch card. So stop everything. That's the winner. <laughs> That's the winner. That person... <laughs> Person. That was that was really fun. I, that's yeah, awesome. It was a, a nice surprise. Uh, somebody sent in an epistle. You know, I, I think I've mentioned epistle in each one of the. You can send in a letter, a postcard, an epistle, something like that. And someone finally sent one in. Um, we got. Let's see. There were five haikus. There were three with limericks. There was one from limerick. Uh, let's <laughs> see. Uh, three Christmas cards. 
You know, I could probably make the, if I had uh, an endless supply of time, I could make the infographic three times as long as it is right now and include all kinds of that kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, I've kind of limited myself to this height. So whatever I can get into this height is, is, is what we'll share. And then we can talk about the rest on the air. Um, any, uh, any, any sonnets? Or, uh, I didn't see a sonnet. Know, long uh, verse. Or, uh, long what? Too bad. No, I, I mean any long like 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 Dante's Inferno, like I don't know how many well, cantos or stuff. The, that, that would be one good. long one that actually does stick out in my head is, uh, what's his screen name, Dan? Siggy, Siggy Ray, Siggy Ray Cyrus, St Stiggy, Stiggy Ray, Ray Cyrus, Cyrus. Um, sent um, a very nice. Uh, uh, well, I don't want to call it a sonnet, but he gave me paragraph after paragraph after paragraph just sharing what pen he was using and what was inked. And when, you know, it was, as all of the letters are, a very fun read. But that one sticks out because each paragraph was in a different color ink. This was one of the graph papers, I believe. Um, cool. yeah, and I'm just going to pick a letter and, and read it here because this is... This is basically what you get when and someone asked in one of their entries, Eric, do you actually read all of these? Yes, I read every single word on every single entry um, because A, I like it, and B, I, I need all the information so that I can make this infographic. And who wouldn't want to read these? Here's just, I just picked one. This is from Anne in Pennsylvania, Dear Geeks. First of all, Franklin Christoph Rocks. Very good, Anne. Get that out of the way first off before you forget. Secondly, I have to say a big thank you for opening up the world of fountain pens to me. I have truly fallen deep into the rabbit hole thanks to your podcast. I hope you're listening, Anne. <laughs> Not only have I bought my first pen, but also my second, third, and fourth, along with a number of inks. I'm planning on attending my first pen show in August, the DC Pen Show. Hope to see you there. Oh, you'll see us. Come say hello. <laughs> but see, that's, that is a very typical entry... Uh, and so who wouldn't want to open all of those and read that and, and see how we're, we're making people indulge in the madness everywhere we go? Oh, I think you are. I'm, I know. I'm absolutely you, convinced that you are. You, you were that. on the straight and narrow until you met us, right, Doc Brown? And now look what happened. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I was, I mean, I was, I was so, I mean, I was a nice person. I was normal. I and now, you know, it's, well, <laughs> whatever. Mr. Smith. Okay, I, I guess yes. I went off script there for a moment. Uh, am I back on track now? Okay, We're where good are we going? Go. Um, I think we need to give people another reason to send yes, us I more think, postcards. I think people do need to send those. Uh, and why are what? Oh, that goes back to my original question. What are we going to do with this tree ring pen? Oh, we we oh, need to give it, it away. away. Give it away. It'll just sit here on my desk until it's ready to be given away, and that is already posted at the website. Um, now let's see. For the McCarta giveaway, we didn't have anything specific that they had to that entries had to write, uh, if I'm remembering correctly. For Edison, it was Edison Rules. For Franklin Christoph, it was Franklin Christoph Rocks. We did get, speaking of the entries again, quite a few people make either poems, verse, or sentences talking about uh, geology somehow working the rocks part into, you know, we are a clever bunch. Uh, <laughs> and more than a good size handful, because we've done Micarta, uh, uh, we've done Edison, and now we're doing Franklin Christoph, more than a, a good size handful of people said third time's a charm. I'm sure it is, but it's not going to be a third charm for everybody. <laughs> but maybe some. <laughs> anyway, uh, what we're asking people to write on the entry for the tree ring pen. I'm going to have to look it up because <laughs> I found it at the tree ring pen website. Does anybody remember? They should they should not like like uh, put their age in <laughs> tree rings in I the background of the letter. Or... Uh, we're going to have a little dead air unless somebody remembers it off the top of their head. We're giving away a tree ring. Uh, the, the term dendrochronology. There we are. And, and I'm, I'm, I, now that you hear it, I'm sure you know exactly what it means. Uh, you need to provide a definition. I said somewhere on your entry, be sure to provide a definition for dendrochronology. And not long after that, someone commented, it, it, does it have to be a correct definition? I guess it doesn't. 
<laughs> I didn't specify it had to be correct. So give it your best shot. If, you, if your idea, uh, and I, I, having gone through all of the entries since the beginning of these contests, I know that we're a very clever bunch. If you'd like to wow me with your incorrect but very funny uh, definition, please, by all means, have at it. Isn't isn't that isn't that the the, um, the 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 thing you do when when you are a tree and you're you're sort of ill and you're not sure you don't want to die you have yourself frozen oh, yeah, and then so that when better it's, times it's, you know arrive you can sort of be defrosted and then you can be a nice little healthy tree again wasn't that the, isn't that the definition so he, 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 he or am I, off there? I expect your entry you can give it to me in DC. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, be sure to get your entry in. Uh, have to be here by the end of this month. And and speaking of end of the month and entries, don't we have anything to give away? Okay. No, I well, think thank so. you very much uh, for joining me today, gentlemen. Uh, now nah, let's give a pen away. Um, let's see. D six pen, right? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. We're giving away the Franklin Christoph Model 66. Exactly. Desk it pen, is time correct? to give away the Franklin Christoph Model 66 desk pen. I have all of the entries right here. Um, they're they're in an order that I know. Uh, so I need who's going to pick a number today? There I can pick a number. You need, you need a number. number. I tell you what. Let's pick a number. I'll find the winner, and then you two can play twenty questions. I just made that up off the okay. top of my head. We'll try it. Or the audience can ask questions. I won't reveal the winner right away. They have to be questions that I can answer with a yes sure. or a no. I need a number from 1 um, to, what was it, 234? I'm just looking at the list. From 1 to 234, Doc Brown, who's going to win this pen? Ta -da -da! It's number 18. Eight number zero. Eight zero. Lucky number 80. I always say that's my lucky number. Let's see who else has lucky number 80. All right. Uh, I will. F I know who won. So you can ask me questions about this person and I'll try to find the entry. Is it uh, Queen Elizabeth of England? It is England? not Queen Elizabeth. Oh, the answer is no. I can only answer yes or no. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Yeah. First, male. I'm sorry, what? Person, a male. Uh, yes. Is uh, it a male from the United States of America? I don't know where he's from. I only know where the entry came from. Ah. See, I'm... Is it a male who wrote a haiku? Oh, I haven't found his entry yet. Uh, it does not say anything <laughs> okay. here, so I don't think so. <laughs> you about him if you really don't know anything about him we can ask random questions then I mean did he write on Just purple let paper let me find the entry oh hurry up I mean. so while he's doing that um, I'm going to talk about a, a recent acquisition that, that I got recently it's the, the Faber-Castell Emotion and I, I picked it up for a really good price. Now, Stephen, you've reviewed this pen, right? Yeah, yeah, I did. And w what did you and think I, of? It? Well, I, I, I'll, I'll tell you a, a little bit of background. I, I, up to this point, I visited one pen show, and that was in the Netherlands. And I, I uh, a, a German uh, friend uh, whom I, I met via via the YouTube reviews said, I'm going to be there and I'll bring a lot of pens. So I, I and I did the same and we, we tried out each other's pens and there were a couple of pens. At the end of the day, I, I sort of made mental notes and thought, okay, I have to get this, that, that, and that. One of them uh, was the faber Castell Emotion um, because I, I, I think he gave it to me and I used it and I said, what is this? What is this nib? What is this material? And he said, oh, it's just stainless steel. And I said, no, it can't be. And he said, yes. It's just stainless steel, and you know. And then when I when I did the review, he posted a comment, and he said, "Well, if if you would blindfold people and have them write with a very good gold nib, and have them write with this nib, and of course the writing would be illegible, but they would not be able to tell the difference." And I I actually think that that may just be true because I really really like the smoothness of that nib. And and that's been my experience with um, Faber Castell pens as well. Um, 
the previous pen I had of theirs was was a medium, and it was one of the smoothest I I'd ever written with. Um, I haven't inked this up and and written with it yet. Just got it last night, but yeah, really, I really like the feel of it in my hand. Um, I can't wait until after the show to to get some ink in this and start using it. And this is a a broad nib or a fine or what? Broad, medium. 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 Okay, sorry, I missed the audio. Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah. These are these are really fascinating. And even I was surprised that even the the fairly inexpensive pens like the Faber Castell Basic they have a nib that resembles this. I'm not sure whether it's exactly the same nib, but it does look like it. Um, even those are really smooth. So these these are really really nice pens. I really like them. And indeed, this this emotion that the design with this sort of has a fairly typical shape, but it's it's yeah. Very nice. Pen. I I missed the pen we're talking about. It's it's the the Fabric Castell oh, Emotion. Okay. Not familiar with that pen. And you haven't inked it yet. I, uh, I haven't. Um, right back guys. All right, we'll talk to you later. Dan has left. But you're st you're still here. Okay, good. I found it. You gave I'm me here. number. So, you gave me yes. number ah, eighty, and for some reason in my filing 80, system, yes. I went to one eighty and said, "Why isn't he here?" And so you know, it took me a minute to figure out I was in the wrong hundreds. Uh, but I have it here now. So what would you like to know about this person? We've established that he's male. Uh, we established that he's male. Then I'm now going to ask: Is he from the United States? And his of entry is from the United States of America. Is he from the northern part or the southern part of the United yes. States of America? Yes. Well, yeah, that's I, the answer. Answer, I can only answer yes or no. Oh, oh yeah, that's true. Uh, he, he is, uh, is he from the south? No, I wouldn't say this is the south. Okay, then okay. he's from the north. Yes. Okay. Um, did he write a haiku? He did not. Did he write any type of poetry whatsoever? He did not. Did he write anything? Yes, he did. He whatsoever. wrote Franklin Christoph Rock's entry for extra fine Model 66 desk pen, and then his name and contact information. I see. So, um, he is active on your forums? Um, I don't recognize the name. So I, I really can't say if he's active or not. Uh, I, just, I don't happen to recognize the name. Yeah, I have no idea. Well, actually, I, I have no idea how to ID this person. <laughs> this so person I, is from Pennsylvania. Well, and the winner of the Franklin Christoph Model 66 desk pen is Chuck. Chuck from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, who I will contact uh, via email right after the show uh, and put Chuck in touch. Uh, with the Franklin Christoph website so that he can order his choice of nib on that pen. Woo! -hoo! Sorry to disappoint everybody else, but awesome. um, a little announcement, uh, if I can remember. <laughs> uh, I got uh, an email, a few emails, uh, yesterday or the day before from Scott Franklin at uh, uh, Franklin Christoph. Uh, saying, what are we going to do with runners-up? And I said, well, we haven't really talked about runners-up. He says, well, give away, uh, give away another pen. So guess what? This is not a desk pen. Wow. We're gonna, he's going to give away a Model 27, uh, which is their Collegia fountain pen. So we get to actually pick another winner. This is a runner-up who will win a, a Model 27 Franklin Christoph in the winner's choice of color and with whichever steel, steel nib they, the winner wants. So actually, uh, the party's not over yet. We need another number. And give, please give me a number between and 1 good. and 234, but don't give me number 80. Da, 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 da. That was just the, um, the exciting <laughs> music. Um, it is 193. One, nine, three. Three. This time I'll go to the right section. Now this, yeah, so this it's not 293, it's know. not 93. This person is known. Okay. Oh, you you've just been there, right? You you just been where to, to this to the, these numbers? I mean, you just you just visited the yes, one eighty one ninety area. Oh, yeah, but no, this person is active at Fountain Pen Geeks enough for me to know who this person is. Um, you can ask me any questions. I'll see if I can find it quickly. Is it yes, a yes. male? As far as I know, yes. Is it a male from the United no. States of America? Is it? 
Prins Willem Alexander van Oranje Nassau from the Netherlands. Nein. Nein. Ah, schade. Uh, is it is he any type of royalty I whatsoever? I don't know. Uh, could be. Uh, Queen Elizabeth is on the envelope in the form of a stamp. Oh, I see. Could he be from no. the UK then? Oh. <laughs> Plot thickens, man. Um, could he be? Queen Elizabeth is, but he's not. Is he from some overseas area? Of the UK, like a colony with things. Yeah, I'm and from a stuff. colony. We we don't have Liz is not on our True. stamps, but she might True. be True. someday. True. Is he from a part of the world I cannot come up yeah, with? Apparently right now. so. He he's a Dan's back. Can you hear us, Dan? Okay. I can hear you. Me? We can kind of hear you. We're picking a, a runner up. Uh, uh, you were out of the room when I announced that uh, Scott Franklin had contacted me and said, give, give away another pen, a runner-up pen, so we don't disappoint a lot of people. And I thought that was as, you know, it wasn't surprising to me because you and I both know, Dan, how, how nice Scott is. Um, so we've chosen a number. It was 193. Dan, you and I both know this person, not personally, uh, but from our dealings at FP Geeks. Uh, it is a male who does not live in the United States. Queen Elizabeth is on the envelope in the form of a stamp, but it is not from the UK. That seemed to... Uh, well, that yeah, was that my look exactly too, Dan. I thought it was me. Is it, is it Rocky? No, it's not Rocky. Oh, Rocky oh. has never entered. We need to talk to him about that. But uh, Rocky lives yep. in Australia, and that is a place where you might find Queen Elizabeth on a stamp. This entry is not from Australia. No, I don't really. I have. I don't have a clue. I mean, well, if you have Queen Elizabeth on a stamp and it's not from the UK, and it's not from Australia, there is one other large country. Canada. Oh, Canada! The that winner of the runner-up okay. uh, Model Twenty Seven <laughs> pen is uh, a, a, a Canadian, and the winner is Dirk. 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 Dirk Lint. Um, I don't recall the screen name at the moment, but Dirk, Dirk and Fountain Pen Geeks go way back. Congratulations, Dirk. That was fun. Um, and uh, especially for putting Queen Elizabeth. If I remember correctly, the, his last entry had... And I don't think you got that one. I think that one went to uh, uh, Brian Gray. Uh, the stamp was the Titanic. I think it was a four-stamp series that made up the entire... It was a, a beautiful stamp. Uh, no one sent that one in. Uh, congratulations, oh. Dirk. Uh, the winner of the desk pen, you were out of the room, Mr. Smith, was Chuck. Chuck from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. You know, I, I, I didn't tell the whole truth when I said Scott Franklin had contacted me and said, give away another pen. He actually said, give away two more pens. So we can do two runners up. So we're going to give away. <laughs> I'm immediately going back to We're going running. to give away yet another Model 27 in the color of, of the winner's choice. I need a number. <laughs> From 1 to 234, that is not 80 and is not 193, Doc Brown. Ta -da -da -da. That was the interesting music again. We now have result 15. One five. So 1-5. One five. Five. That should be rather easy to find. I should verify. So I, I have one yes, no question. Are there going to be any more Christoph pens being given away after this, or is this actually the end? Like This is the last one. I have been completely truthful now. He said okay. give away two more and make them Model 27s. Um, I have uh, number 15 in my hand. Are there any questions? Perhaps, perhaps the audience is better at asking questions than the hosts? Yeah. I think anyone is better at asking questions than I am in any case in this regard, so. Mr. Smith. Yes, sir. Any questions from you or the audience or Doc Brown? Did Doc talk about any of his recent acquisitions? No, we're acquisitions? trying to give away a pen here. Okay. Well, that was my question. <laughs> that was my Sorry. question. Yes. <laughs> I will talk about my recent acquisitions, but first, the question, uh, is it the Prime Minister of Greece? It is not the Greece? Prime Minister of Greece. No. Oh. Is there a Greek stamp attached uh, to the letter? No, there is not. Uh, 
Is it from any country in the world that is not Greece, but where they do speak Greek? Uh, it's not an official language that exists. of the country, but I'm sure there are people who speak Greek. Ah. Does it have anything to do with Greece or the Greek? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, no. Someone from Greece okay, okay. won the um, Edison pen last time. Is it? Is it a yes. man or a woman? As far as I know. Oh yes, is it a man? <laughs> I don't learn. Ah. Yes. Is it a man? Ah. Is he from the United States the of America? Is from the United States of America. <laughs> dun, da, da, dun, da. Is he active on your phone? I'm forms? not familiar with the name. Is he nice? Absolutely. <laughs> we don't know that. Absolutely. Of course, he has to be nice if he's Absolutely. like fun of Pengi. Uh, that was a stupid question. Sorry. Um, has he written to you before? I don't recognize the name. Did he write in cursive? Yes. Did he write a haiku no. in cursive? Did he write any form of poetry in no. cursive? But he did include Franklin Christopher. Did he write any form of poetry in a, a <laughs> okay. different font Shall I than Chris? Who this is? <laughs> yes. <laughs> this, the winner is from Raleigh, North Carolina, and his name is Anthony. Anthony, congratulations! You are the second runner-up. Uh, you have won a Franklin Christoph uh, Model Twenty Seven in your choice of color and choice of steel nib. I will contact all winners via email and and we'll get these get the, all of this taken care of and we should probably do that quickly because Franklin Christoph will be at the DC pen show coming up soon and we want to take care of this before that don't we think recent acquisitions thank you everybody who entered the last contest um, I have all your entries here I appreciated every single one of them um, please enter the next one it's already at the website that's the tree ring pen contest giveaway so forth so on well, well, what was the word again the dendrochronology what, that's what? you know where your trees have themselves frozen so that yeah. oh yeah yeah no, I, I know oh, I, I know I'm just repeating it for the people out there you know okay recent acquisitions um, I, I have a new Caveco a new Caveco art sport uh, for the benefit of the people who are watching the video, it is a Caveco Sport, uh, but it's acrylic and swirly yellow and rather cool. And I'm getting an ooh look from Mr. Smith, so I know it meets with his approval. Um, I also got, while I was in a Caveco mood, this is a Caveco sketch. It is not a fountain pen, it is a pencil. Um, also an acrylic of some kind. Uh, the the lead is 5.6 millimeters, uh, so it's rather wide lead, uh, but it's great for sketching. And I, I like having pencil nearby. Um, and Wait a minute, the lead, wait, wait, so, oh, sorry, the, the lead is 5.6 yes, millimeters? It, it's a very broad, broad nibbed lead. But that's, that's huge. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's like, like half of my, yes, it my is. pink. It is, my it is figure, huge. It's called. It oh. is, it, it's about, it, it's not, it's, it's not point fifty six it's, millimeters. It's really it's five point six millimeters. It's, it's, it's wow for sketching. It's, it's that's, quite large. Quite that's large. huge. Awesome. Oh, bring yes. that to DC, It'll be there. please. You can see it. You can fondle it. Right. Speaking of fondling, what did you get that's new? Um, I got uh, the rough guide to Washington D.C., which may be useful <laughs> uh, since I'm going there. Uh, but more relevant to this uh, this this topic, let me see. I got a couple of things, uh, which were all very cool. I think um, I'll start with uh, this pen, which is the Kaigelu Century Star 316, uh, and that looks just like a Parker Jewel Fold, and it's from China. Um, <clears throat> although actually, I, I, I guess it's from Texas because I, I got it from Crazy oh, right. Ivan, who was also is, is he on your forms. sending pens out to people now? So I have to ask him for a pen. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. Well, you announced it to me. At least he sent He's a pen out to me. And the coolest thing is. He actually ground the nib to an, wow. a metallic. So he's for me. grinding nibs and sending away pens. All right. How do I how do I get on that? Yes, list? he is. And I of course I was I was very honored to to get that. Uh, because when I say I got it, I didn't buy it. He just it he just gift. sent it to me as like like a gift, which, which is uh, um, really really cool. Uh, it's it's a really nice pen. The jewel fold is a pen I don't own, but if you are not sure about whether you want to get one, then I I 
think this is a pretty accurate, you know, I'm not sure whether I should say replica, but it does really look like it. Um, it has some really nice marbling. I don't know how well you can see that, but it's it's pretty cool. And of course, the the nib, uh, the crazy Ivan did, is 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 really nice. It, um, so that's cool. Um, then, on the same day, I got a pen, which is also from China, but in fact that is from Canada because I got that from Ziggy. You know Ziggy. Uh, I think he's in your Ziggy forums too, right? Ziggy probably in the chat. And, Likely, yeah. I, I think I was chatting with him yesterday, and then he said he would be. So that's that's cool. Um, so this is a really nice pen, which he sent me. So I had I had two great people sending me great pens. Uh, this is from China, and this is from a, a brand called Luo Shi. And the the pen is called the God of Longevity. Now I'm I'm pretty sure you can't really see it, but sort of. Um, in in relief on here is one of those pictures of like a, a Chinese. A bald guy with a beard leaning on a stick of the god of longevity. I'm I'm sure, uh, which actually looks very nice, and and I, I really like this pen. Um, it writes pretty well. I I think the nib was a little bit dry, but I've I've seen it with with more Chinese pens, and that was very easy to solve. And now it writes beautifully. It's a very smooth nib. It's a nice two tone nib, which you probably can't really see either, but it it is, and it's it's really really nice. And then. So, of course, I mean, thanks to Crazy Ivan and, and thanks to, to um, uh, Ziggy, it's, it's really cool. And then finally, I got another uh, Chinese pen, which is this one, the, the Jin Hao. It's a bit reflective, I'm afraid, but I can't really do anything about that. Um, it's a Jin Hao 505, which has a very nice faceted barrel. And that's something you either like or you don't, I guess. But it's all metal. It's 50 grams, so it's, it's not a light pen. Um, it even has a, a metal section which has very small facets on it. Um, and it, like all Chin Hao pens, it, it wasn't particularly expensive, so that's very, very cool. And then, finally, I do have to show that. Um, the person I correspond with sent me this, which looks like Elvis Presley, and it is. And on the back it says, the 2012 Fountain Pen Elvis Award is hereby presented to Stephen Brown, Mythic Pen Guru Extraordinaire. The FPE recognizes the person in the Fountain Pen community that Elvis would most want to talk to about pens, if, in fact, Elvis was alive, which we hope he is. So, um, very, cool, very right? Cool. I mean, <laughs> but you, you made out like a bandit. Is it, is it Christmas in the Netherlands? I know it's it's strange, and usually you don't even celebrate Christmas. But apparently, it's people send you Christmas cards. Yeah, they it's, send it's, me Christmas, Christmas gifts. In so it's July, Christmas season. Um, so, with these recent pen acquisitions, are, are you finally over the hundred mark of number of pens in your collection? You, you I don't think very so. Close. But I can, I can pretty much guarantee you that after DC, <laughs> okay. uh, the one hundred mark will be. <laughs> yeah. And you already talked about your recent acquisition, right, Mr. Smith? That was when I was searching for the winner of our pen. Um, so I don't have anything else. Well, you know, we've uh, gone on for quite a while now. To probably wrap up. I have no clue what Stephen is doing over there. He, he pulled out a no, sword I'll, and I heard I'll, noises. I'll, I'll tell you what I was doing. I, this is a sword, and I used it to open my curtains because I'm sort of behind it. Otherwise, it was getting too dark. That's that's what I was doing. I didn't want to get up yet again because I already got up quite a bit. But all right. I'm all back. Then while you, you on, arrange your curtain with your sword, I'll just remind everybody how they can talk, contact us via email at podcast at fpgeeks.com. You can call us, 415-685-GEEK. That's 415-685-4335. We are on Twitter, twitter.com slash fpgeeks. We're on Facebook, facebook.com slash fpgeeks. We have a website, fpgeeks.com. We have a forum, fpgeeks.com slash forum. You can send us things via mail at Fountain Pen Geeks, PO Box 499, Highland, California, 92346. Anything else, gentlemen? Da -da 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 -da. Well, um, Stephen, I'll see you on Wednesday. Yes, we will. Like just a few days away at this point. And Dan, we'll see you in Skype.
You've been listening to Eric and Dan on Fountain Pen Radio, a weekly podcast produced by FBGeeks.com. Thanks for listening. But the fun is far from over as the site is constantly buzzing with new content. So until next week, thanks for coming out. Good night.